Hello everyone, as promised, here is another build guide for Low Life Shaman Spriggan. First of all, I'm gonna show you guys the gameplay, so you see uh, how it plays. We're just gonna go into Monolith, we're at 187 Corruption. We're just gonna do a random map. Let's not grab Dodge. Dodge again. Let's grab... Uh, increase health. Alright. <clears throat> So uh, this build I played on the Vision Tournament, uh, we won again, we pushed like 700 waves with it, uh, pretty crazy. I don't know if people believe that Shaman is underpowered, but Shaman is actually, in my opinion, uh, very underrated. It takes time to, it takes time to get online, but you're gonna see that our, um, our worth is absolutely crazy. This is uh, this build I'm running without any snapshotting. If you snapshot your crows for survivability, for healing effectiveness, etc., you're gonna reach, you know, 20k ward plus, no problem, and your crows will be pretty much immortal. But for the sake of this build guide, I am showing it without any any snapshotting or anything like that. If your crows die, you can just like resummon them, you know, revive them. We're hitting the dummy for like um, half a million with our frostbites. Or uh, ward retention is at 540 something. 550. And that's why we have so much ward. Uh, and you can only achieve that, obviously, by being a shaman. We will explain why. So this build is indeed a shaman build. And if you want to play the low life version, you want to be playing a shaman. As you can see, we attack very fast. And we're making use of a few interactions that I'm going to explain in order to, you can see our ward just getting crazy. We have uh, a lot of dodge thanks to our millstorm stacking. You can see, you know, we can get a lot, a lot, a lot of millstorm stacks. Uh, by just hitting enemies, so we're gonna be, you know, between 40 and 60% dodge depending on how many stacks we get. You can see we can get uh, easy 20 stacks when you, the enemies actually survive a bit more. You can see we have 16 now, we're at 60% dodge. And with better gear you should be at, uh, you know, around 50% armor. Alright, so I'm gonna go and show how this build works now that we've seen how it plays. So obviously, uh, we're uh, we're um, we are a uh, uh, spriggan, but we're a shaman. So the way it works, you can see our ward retention goes up for every totem we have. This is thanks to this passive in shaman, right here, that we get uh, elemental resistance per totem, and we also get 50 elemental resistances when you control a totem. Uh, this makes it, and with this, you know, we get 1% ward retention per uncapped cold resistance. And you can see that if I summon all my totems, right, which is these six totems plus the two totems of, uh, we get a total of 400 cold resistance, which translates into 560, uh, 550 uh, ward retention. And that's why we get so much ward. You can only do this as a shaman, obviously. And that's why the low life version works as a shaman. Why low life? Well, one of the reasons you want to be low life is because thanks to this relic, the Twisted Heart of U Ukeros, when we use an elemental scale, aka or spirit thorns, we we consume 15% of our HP and we get it into ward. So thanks to our or the combination, right, of the ward retention, let's turn into Spriggan again, the combination of um of the ward retention with our uh, HP consumption. You can see that we're basically, and we have a shit ton of caspit, right? We, you want to get caspit on your weapon, you're going to get caspit on your passives, etc. You're going to see that basically, even though you're getting killed by the crows that give you worth with these nodes here, you know, you are actually uh, consuming that HP and turn it into ward really easily. And thanks to that, we actually managed to stay below 35% health. So we benefit from the damage reduction of Berserker. 
So all of this war that we have, it's it's benefiting from this 25% less damage taken. And if you combine this, you know, with Ursign, sorry, uh, with Ursign and with Aspect of the Boar, uh, you basically get tanky, tanky, tanky as fuck. My current, the, the current turn I'm currently playing is sitting at 90k EHP when he has uh, his, you know, uh, 10, 12, 20 stacks of Maelstrom plus its armor. You can see there. Again, we have our 50% dodge easy, just without hitting any enemies. We have our 16k ward, and again, it's just uh, a tanky, tanky boy. Um, and that's how it works. You can see the damage uh, right there. We're hitting for 600k when we have all the stacks going on, and you can see that obviously the DPS for our orange shield is like one million something. You know, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty absurd DPS. Um, but yeah, let's let's go into the now that we explain how the build functions. Let's talk about the passives. So we are converting all our poison chance into uh, frostbite. So getting frost uh, poison chance in your in uniques in your gear etc is gonna be a huge damage boost. So keep that in mind. We're also using these nodes to get rage and ward on cast. What that means is that the more cast speed we have, the more ward we're gonna get. The more and the more. Um, times we're gonna proc uh, Twisted Heart of Ulcros. So for that reason, you wanna get as much cast speed as you have, as you can. You can see right now, my current cast speed with Totems and with six stacks or of Maelstorm, which we're gonna get uh, briefly, is uh, 141, right, cast speed. And that is very important because it will, you know, the more you, you get Maelstorms also when do you cast uh, Spirit Thorns, so, you know, scaling a cast speed will get us more Maelstorms, will get us more ward, will get us more dodge, will get us more everything, basically, right? And we'll also apply more damage. Since we're playing a dot build, cast speed is a multiplicative for us. So it's really good, right? Then we're having the chance to pierce and the penetration, really classic. And we have the Bale Spirits. Bale Spirits are these things that basically if I transform into uh, a spray and you will see that when I transform... I'll up, these balls will appear next to me, these frozen balls. And these balls also cast the thing. So basically, if you have three of these balls at the same time, you basically cast a shit more projectiles, pretty much. Uh, so it's more damage, more AoE, more everything. Uh, extra points that you could get if you had like a dragon wand, like I have in the planner, you wanna max this out, you could get this point for extra procs, whatever, you know. You could get more armor if you wanted. Maelstorm. You, can, you, have, you have different ways to set this up. I went for the lining, so we can apply more sh more frostbites and more shreds and more everything. I went for all the classic cast. And I also went for this, for killing an enemy, has a chance to create a maelstrom stack. Uh, this has a cooldown, but when you're in arena, if this procs every two seconds, you know, that's a lot of extra maelstorms. So don't undervalue these points. But you could put this if you want it on, you know, on the chill chance, on the damage. Uh, on the area, whatever you prefer. It's it's kind of optional. Then for Thorn Totem, the only thing we want is for them to have as many totems as possible because we're casting them thanks to this idol. Chance to on hit to summon a Thorn Totem. So you can see when I when I attack with my with my thingy, with my thorn, you can see I'm casting the the, the the totems there. And the reason we want as many totems as possible is because we're gonna be getting cold damage per totem thanks to this idol. Cold damage per totem, you can get up to 22. And we're also getting the mentioned ward retention that is gonna make us more effective in low life. So the only the main thing that we want is we want our totems to stay up as long as possible. We want as many totems as possible. And, and we want uh to them to have us for lack of reasons, mostly, we want them to have as minimum cast speed as possible because this is a laggy build. And until they optimize it, I would advise you to use the minus cast speed, just so you know there's less projectiles on your screen and you don't lag as much. If this ever gets optimized, we might maybe change the tree into into something else, just to get a bit extra DPS or a, a bit of extra utility from them. But uh, I would say this is the best at the moment, just for performance. You could put the mo these points for mana. These do nothing. You could put them on whatever you want, double damage, whatever. I just put them here because I literally don't want to deal with performance. So I just have them for the world retention, the damage, and that's it. Why wolves? 
Well, the reason we're using wolves is because of this point. It doesn't matter what where you put the other points, the only po po point you need is this. Maximum companion. You can have an additional companion active at once. This is basically allows us to have three crows instead of two crows. Right, so we spec into wolves just so we can have three crows. Uh, you could run spring and companion if you want it for the crit avoidance, for the, you know, for you could you could run any other buff, you know, storm totem for the movement speed while mapping, whatever you want. But for arena and for end game content, I recommend having three crows because, you know, the crows are giving you worth thanks to god berries and uh, they're also giving you intelligence which is worth retention. So, you know, three crows is 30 intelligence. And, you know, these guys are going to be giving you 300 worth every 3 seconds each. And if you give them healing effectiveness on idols, idols like this, which I'm not using at the moment for the sake of this video, uh, you know, you can, you can, you know, 99, 99, 99, 99, you can get that times 5, pretty much, right? So again, re you, 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 you could be getting basically 700 worth per, per time you get healed easy, right? So keep that in mind. And uh, that's pretty much it. Four passives, like I mentioned, you know, we're a primalist, we want to get the HP and the minion HP, so we get HP ourselves and our minions get HP. We want to get the attunement with the cold resistance, again, attunement is damage and cold resistance is worth retention. You want to get the increased health, obviously, and you want to get the, the berserker, so we can benefit from it while we're at low life, so we're tanky as fuck. Uh, Beastmaster, you can get Ursine and you can get Aspect of the Boar. I was uh, experimenting a bit with uh, 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 with um, improved aspect of the boar with boar sign constitution for the extra 15% damage reduction. But the reality is, like, when you play this build, you are basically... Mele Meles can't touch you whatsoever. So it's very rare to even see aspect of the boar proc. Because again, you are you're, you have incredible range, right? You are you have a shit ton of freeze rate multi, so everything's getting freezed, everything's getting st uh, slowed. You can see how many ailments this shit has, right? And the best thing about it is that because you have a lot of mail storms, uh, you can see like if enemies get close to me, like mail storm is also doing a shit ton of damage, right? So um, so yeah, I mean you can see here if I if I hit the this is just the mail storm damage, just with the eight stacks of mail storm. If you, you get 20 stacks, you know, you're, you're gonna be hitting easy, easy, or like 60k. I was hitting 60k right before, so keep that in mind, you can see 50k, easy. With no frostbite, with nothing, right? So keep that so keep that in mind. Maelstrom would, would basically keep you safe from uh, melee enemies. So again, you can exp you, you can get these points if you feel that you're, you're failing to keep enemies at bay, but I think this is more optimal. Uh, for Druid, you want to grab the armor for your crows and yourself. Endurance is not that useful because we're low life, but we're mainly grabbing this for the armor for our uh, for ourselves and the crows. We're, bring, we're grabbing the cast speed and the movement speed for when we're in Spriggan, which is obviously insane because the Spriggan is very, very slow unless you have a good pair of snow drifts with a movement speed legendary. We want the penetration when transformed, we want the cool damage, and we obviously want all the freeze rate multi and the freeze rate effect. If you wanted to snapshot your crows, I would gar I would uh, recommend you to put points into the healing effectiveness for minions before you summon your crows. Then you can take take the points out and put them for uh, put them anywhere else. But again, everything I'm showing here in this video is without snapshotting, just so you see that the build is completely playable without it. But you could snapshot your crows so they don't die with minion gear, minion region, etc. And then for a shaman. We want the attunement and the penetration. Attunement is damage plus penetration, really good. We want the armor when we have a totem, because we want to get as tanky as possible. The cast speed when we have a totem, obviously we always have a totem, so it's a free cast speed. We want the shock and the uh, sorry, the chill and the HP, really nice. Uh, we want the to get here for the chill chance and the freeze multi and the cold resistance. Again, everything here is good for us, right? CC, freeze rate multiplier, so it's damage and cold resistance. And we then get the huge free frame multiplier boost of Shaman plus the elemental resistance per totem. And again, the, uh, the items that you need for this build are basically shackles will give you the word retention per, per totem pretty much because you get cold resistance with totems, right? You can see my cold resistance if I summon the totems goes up, right? 
and that gives us ward retentions, that's thanks to shackles, and obviously frostbite is good for damage too. Then we have snowdrifts, snowdrifts will convert our freeze rate multiplier into freeze uh, frostbite effect, that's gonna be huge damage for us. And then we have Gaspar, which gives us 100% increase, 100 to 180 increase freeze rate multiplier. This is multiplicative. This is increased percentage freeze multiplier, and that's the only source in the game. So you're going to see how this single item basically will double your damage. You can get this from um, from this timeline here, from, from killing the last ruin. It's pretty rare, so it might take you a few tries. So keep that in mind. And uh, yeah... Uh, obviously you want to have uh, Exanginus, so you're low life and you want to stay, the reason you want to be low life mainly is so you're Berserker, right? You want to stay in low life for the damage reduction like I mentioned, really important. And you want Twisted Heart of Ukiros, so you uh, have the ability to consume HP and stay at low life while the crows are healing you, as you can see. Right? Really important you stay in that low life threshold. Uh, so you get the damage reduction. Uh, we can take a look at a bit of a basic gearing. You can get Frostbite Idols, you can get Crit Avoidance Idols, HP Idols, you can get Frostbite. Uh, you need one Totem on hit. You can get Poison Resistance with damage over time, with Poison Chance, etc. Uh, and I can show you guys a, ba a gearing that I'm, is going to be linked in the description. So you guys get, uh, get an idea of what to get and what to look for. Uh, basically, uh, I put uh, everything that you see uh, purple. It's just as a reference for you, so it just means the highest tiers are the highest priorities. But this is completely playable with yellow gear. I did play it with yellow gear for 90% of the tournament until I got the good gear. So again, as long as you you don't you don't even need Gaspar. Again, Gaspar is a very very big damage boost. But again, if you instead of having 5,000 free mul multiplier, you have 2,000. You, you know, you're still hitting the dummy for 300k, you know, it's still completely playable without it. So the, the pieces that you need are the Frostbite Shackles for the ward retention, the Snow Drifts, which are really common for the for the conversion of fro frost, uh, Freeze Red Multiplier to Frostbite Effect, and Twisted Heart of Ukeros for, uh, for, you know, making sure you stay at low life. And obviously you have Exanginus for... And if you have a good Exanginus like mine, right, we got this on the tournament, with increased health, dodge, increased dodge rating, increased armor, all of that is gonna completely boost what the character can do. Uh, for amulets, you know, sapphire amulet, really, really good because of the freeze rate and the cold resistance implicit. You can get frailty, you can get dodge, you can get HP, increased elemental damage over time. You basically want everywhere that you can, cast speed everywhere you can, freeze rate multiplier everywhere you can. You need one ring with crude avoidance. Necrotic rings really really good because they will give you um, necrotic resistance and ward retention. So with two of these, you double like you're basically a, you, you it's basically best in slot base for you. And keep in mind, we don't need to build any physical resistance, any lining resistance, any cold resistance, or any physical uh, fire resistance. Uh, basically, because uh, we are gonna get them all for free when we have our totems. You can see right now I have zero 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 right. And as soon as I transform, I put my totems down, and I hit the dummy a few times, which you're always gonna have this, uh, you know. You're gonna see that as soon as we have our totems, we're good to go, right? And again, keep in mind that if you're mapping, and oh, like, I, well, you can just like pre-cast all your totems before you transform, that way you already have your resistances and you can go to town, okay? So again, it's basically free resistances, necrotic from the ring, all of this from the shaman passive, uh, void resistance from the from the from the Gaspar inside that comes with void resistance, and the blessing that you want to get the blessing with void resistance. And the only thing you gotta build is poison res. And this is one of the reasons this build works is because being a shaman, you're not gonna need to invest in resistances. So again, really, really strong build. You could try to play a version of this, like same concept, you know, attacking really fast and stuff as a, as a druid. But I would suggest you to going into a full life version, maybe with bleeding heart and try to stay high health um, and try to focus more on building life and armor instead. But yeah, this is the build. Uh, it's pretty complex. If you guys have any questions, um, feel free to answer. 
uh, feel free to ask in the comments and I will answer. This is definitely an advanced build, so don't play this if it's your first character. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, I'll, you'll have all the links in the description. Bye-bye. Um,